Great Parents podcast. I am Not Great Parent Molly, and this is Not Great Parent Nathan. Hello. And we are uh, chugging along today. And yes. We, we are in our not greatness. <laughs> yes, we've been we've been filming lots of bits and pieces. If you've been watching, not listening to previous episodes, you've seen Molly and I keep changing outfits. clothes and outfits <laughs> all the time. And you're like, are they just doing now like set changes and yeah. co- costume changes? We're re middle? we're refilming things. Oh. We're adding parts and pieces it just it's it's just we're really committed to making these episodes shorter and more practical which means we're going to record them two or three times yeah, to shorten them <laughs> yes we just want to make them work and so uh, we're trying to record more episodes at once and then go back and film and so right. today is our last filming of the day right. we're both a little tired so if this beginning sounds, sounds not little- great that's okay it's because okay. That's what it's we gonna do. be good though. It's that's gonna be good. Do. We are people who want to be pursuing God's goodness yes. and not the greatness of the world, which is that's why right. we call ourselves the Not Great Parents podcast. So, greatness of the world. What does that look like, Nathan? I think it's just it can be broken down into achievements, right, or things we acquire, right. So mm-hmm. things I buy, things I consume. It's it's getting a life that people find admirable. Mm-hmm that people would look at and say, wow, I wish I had your life. Success and status. And- yeah, whatever is worthy of being put on Instagram, right? Yes. So, you know, having a good looking body, lot, a good looking family, right. lots of money, money. lots Ex- of experiences, the best vacation. Oh yeah. The best job. The best house, the best car, yes. the best, all the best of everything. You've yes. incredibly skilled at whatever it is you're that's doing, right. all those things. That's great. That's right. And that's what the world tells us to do. I that's mean, right. we've talked about it many a time, the greatness of the world says you got to have a thing that's and right. you got to have something. Well, we are people who want to be pursuing goodness, the goodness that God defines for us in the Bible right. for ourselves and our families. And that's so, right. you know, today we're going to start a new series. And that's right. This- we took 10 weeks to talk about family. The, 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 uh, one topic everyone thought we didn't even need one episode about, but they did 10. Yeah, we did 10. Anyway, yeah. we talked a lot about family matters and family structure and why that matters yeah. and all that. So now we're moving on to still discussing family. But yeah. all uh, of what we just did, honestly, was lead up to this. To this. It was it was to try and get us all focused on if the family is supposed to be the, the model of life in God's kingdom or life in the church, right? Well, then how do we structure our families right so that that's actually what is happening because nothing happens by accident no nothing I mean, ha- nothing nothing really does it's, and being haphazard about everything doesn't yes. get you where no. you want to go it's sort of like if i don't know the end goal i can't set everything up to to get to know where I'm shooting. No one's getting a bank loan for their new business by walking in and you saying, hey, I'm going to create the world's best crab shack. Forget about Joe's crab shack. Now we've got Bob's crab shack. (laughs) Nathan's crab shack. Nathan's crab shack. And they say, okay, well, let me see your business plan. I don't have a plan. I just want the money, man. It's just going to happen. I've got the vision. I have, I know Mm -hmm. what I want it to be. So it's just going to happen. Yeah. You, know, you don't allow your student to do that when they come in and you know they fail the class and they you say, okay, well, how are you going to do better? And they go, I don't know, I'll just try harder. Yeah. You're like, well, that's not been working. We need a plan, right? Everything that you want to accomplish does have to have some kind of a plan, some kind of a system. If you want the results that you're, you know, if you want, if you want to get the accomplishment, get to the results yeah. you want, then you have to have some kind of plan. And failing to plan <laughs> means that what is that phrase? Failure to plan is a Oh, plan yeah. to fail or something yeah, like it's that. Something like that. Not, something cute. It's something cute cuter like than that. we're capable of. Cuter than we are capable of, especially at this point in the day. Yeah. But it is true that if you don't plan ahead, if you don't yeah. plan things, your probability of getting where you want to go is completely diminished. It may may not. I mean, you may get there, but not likely, and not in the yes. way in which you wanted to. So. We all have plans in our life or we all have things in our life, whether we realize it or not. And what, you know, we would call that a rule of life, right? Yeah, that's the way that we're really looking at it in this series. We're going to be around developing a rule of life. And, you know, as Molly was saying, everybody is being constantly formed into a kind of person. Mm -hmm. You are setting up, whether you know it or not, you have a system in place in your life and Dallas Willard, so here's your Dallas Willard quote. Like, <laughs> you got to have one, say, guys. Yes. Your, your system is perfectly designed to produce the results you're getting. Right. So whatever you're getting. That's why I'd say in your, in your marriage, 
If you are unhappy and you have bad communication in your marriage, you have constant conflict in your marriage, that is because your system of, mar- of being married together is perfectly designed to produce the results you're getting. The problem isn't her. The problem isn't even you. The problem is that you two aren't actually figuring out how to communicate. Mm-hmm. You aren't figuring out how to have the conversation. And you have not. And by not having a plan, what you've said is, we're just not going to communicate. Mm-hmm. And therefore, we're so, going to have lots of conflict. And now our plan is to not be good communicators. <laughs> yes, and eventually our plan is, we're not going to be married. Mm-hmm. I mean, that's eventually, you haven't said that. That isn't the plan that you set up, but that's it. And if you have a, if you have within your home life a certain level of, I wouldn't just say even chaos. I would say if you have a level of ambivalence towards life with God, mm-hmm. towards, and I'm not saying from you, but it may be from your kids, it may be in, in your home life, and you don't really think about it, and you go, man, we never end up doing any of the good stuff that we hear about at church, but man, we're doing a lot of the great stuff. Mm-hmm. The reason why is you have a system that is perfectly designed to produce the results you're getting. Mm-hmm. So what you then have to do is change the system. Mm -hmm. And so what we're talking about is this idea of what's called a rule of life. Mm -hmm. A rule of life is something that everyone in a community, everyone in a family, Mm -hmm. everyone on a team, right? Uh, They agree to, we will all live by this way so that we can have the life we want. Yeah. So we're going to dive into that, and yeah. it's going to be, um, you know, a number of a number of episodes. Yeah. But we're going to get pretty practical about it, um, and we're going to challenge you guys yeah. to come along with us in that and start putting some of these things in place in your family too. So uh, I'm excited about it. I'm excited yeah. that we're. Doing, yeah, I think it'll be a it'll be a great change, and also it's so important. I mean, we both do it in our lives, and it's just it is so important in the pursuit of God's goodness. All right, so rule of life. Yes. Yes. Not rules. Not rules of life. Rule of life. Right. So let's break that down and just talk about the phrase itself. So, you know, rule of life is something that we all have, whether we've written it down or not. (laughs) Yeah, everyone is being ruled by by some rule of life. So the word rule itself yeah. is really mm-hmm. important in this, right? Yes. Yeah, so the word rule, the reason it's rule and not rules is uh, that's this is actually, I think it goes all the way back to who now Catholics at least refer to as St. Benedict. Okay. You might have heard of Benedictine monks, mm-hmm. right? They're kind of the first ones that, not the first ones certainly who withdrew um, from society, you know, to go off and pray and mm-hmm. do all those kind of things. But he was the first one who said, hey, we're going to have a rule of life that everyone in this uh, monastery is going to live by. But the word rule, because he spoke Latin, right, actually was the word regula, which is where we get our word regulate, mm-hmm. right, or to kind of manage, mm-hmm. right? But it's also the word regula for them was also the word, it came from the same root word as the word for trellis. Okay, so trellis, which we would think of as... You know, something you see in your garden. <laughs> yes, or for most people, and this is where I think it... Or I, in their homes. <laughs> I was going to say, what happens for most people is trellises now are more ornate uh-huh. than they are practical. And so you might have a trellis in your home or even in your garden, but it actually has no practical function. Yes. It's this little, almost like lattice work design that kind but, of... At, but if you've ever walked into a house that's being built... Correct. A new house that's being yeah. built or, you know, any structure, yeah. the trellis the number of, you know, how the trellises are yeah. set up is incredibly important. In fact, it's all of the code, all, you know, the right. building code, the trellises matter because they're going to hold the structure in place. Everything Correct. is going to be built on that. Correct. And that is actually as important, if right. not more than the foundation on the ground. Yeah. We often talk in terms of, um, in our relationships with our kids or even trying to help our kids understand themselves, we almost talk to them in terms of they, and we say this even in spiritual life, like they're somehow a piece of uh, equipment. And what I mean is we say things like, okay, 
you got to go out and work, but then you got to have times where you recharge. That's the language you got to yes. recharge. What we mean is you got to recharge your batteries. You got to get your energy back. And that may be through rest or through play, or you do something that just right. oh, makes me feel like me again. And then I can go back and work. Yeah. And yeah. <laughs> yeah. And we said, people say that even about church. This is my weekly recharge. Mm-hmm. I come on Sunday, Reset I plug myself. up, yeah. get some of that God energy. And then I go out into the workplace and do everything in my own power. Because yes. now I have the power and I can go be the person I need to be. Mm-hmm. But Jesus' um, conversation, well, really his rhetoric around the spiritual life was almost always in terms of a vine mm-hmm. and a branch, right? Or some kind of organic thing. Now, right. obviously that's because he did not have uh, an iPod to talk about, but <laughs> and, but they were not harnessing electricity. But I think it's more than that. I think it's because unlike your iPod, which you can charge up and then unplug from the source of life Mm -hmm. and send it away to go do its own thing. A vine being connected to a branch, in order to produce fruit, it must always stay connected. There's never Mm -hmm. a time, because the moment that you unplug a a branch from a vine, that branch is no longer a branch, it's a stick. Mm -hmm. It's dead. It's It's gonna wither up and it's going to die and it will not produce fruit. And that's why Even ancient gardeners began to use trellises Mm -hmm. because what they realized was obviously God made grape vines. And, you know, I used to grow cucumbers and Mm -hmm. if you've ever had a cucumber plant, oh man, it will, it will, it will consume your whole yard. It'll, it'll grow out into the yard. But as often happens, the fruit, because it's, the fruit gets so heavy, it, it gets like dense on the side or all the all the like huh. seeds come because of gravity hang right, down. They hang down. So what you do with the trellis is you're supporting the mm-hmm. vine, so it's not as heavy, right? Mm-hmm. You're supporting the branches so they don't break off, mm-hmm. and you get more fruit and better fruit. Right. And so what Saint Benedict knew was, if we want to be people branches connected to the vine, then we need some trellises in our life mm-hmm. to make sure we are staying connected. We're not our life isn't getting burdened by too much, right? Breaking away from the vine. Mm-hmm. And then we can actually produce more fruit. So when we say rule of life, we aren't saying, here's rules that if you don't keep them, God's gonna get you. No, no, we're not ever gonna say this is a God's gonna get you thing. <laughs> no, that they're not commands, they're, they're not, not commands. rules. But they are a rule. They are a trellis. They are a support. Scaffolding is another, I think is a little more for us, right? This ability to hold up what really matters Mm -hmm. so you can do the work that matters. And as you said, everyone has some system. Yeah. So how would, so if, if we were saying to someone, let's talk about your rule of life, which we are saying to you all, how would you identify what people's rule of life is if they have yet to say it? Or yeah. to so so I think it's really first of all we want to we want to say it's really important to get it out of you <laughs> yeah, what I, it looks like okay I would try and be as honest as I can about what is actually maybe you say driving my life what's my key motivation right. in life I mean we've named this whole podcast you know the the not great parents because what we realized was it's not that parents who put their kids in a bunch of activities are somehow going to end up with kids yeah. who, who don't follow Jesus. It's that that internal motivation. Right. Of, I want them to be great. Mm-hmm. I want them to, to 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 excel in this life and to do something in this life that everyone else looks at and says that matters. That motivation over time can really veer you off. Whereas if you say, I want my kid to be good mm-hmm. and godly and to mm-hmm. have the characteristics of God, even if that means they're also a really great baseball player oh, yeah. or a really great this, the character, their pursuit of Christ matters way more and will keep them from veering off the wrong direction. Mm -hmm. So that internal motivation, that thing that drives you, or what we would say, your rule of life, if you don't, and this way we were saying it before we started, if I don't name what is my rule of life, it will eventually rule me rather than me ruling it. Right, it already does. I mean, essentially, it it, it is... Everyone has a rule of life. So whether you've yes. named it or not, you have a rule of life. That's right. Now, when you're able to say what it is, you're able to decide, am, am I on the, is this the rule that I want? Is the trellis yeah. supporting what I is want this it to a support? Great rule is this or a, a good great rule? rule or a good rule? Do I have things in my, am I supporting the area of my life that matters? Meaning, am I supporting goodness yeah. or am I over here building a trellis to support greatness? Yeah. And I think a lot of parents... and. 
But once again, this is why we talk about it so much, and I'm sure people yeah, just get bored yeah, hearing it, but I think we have to just identify it for people. Our whole world has taught parents to create support structures for their kids to, to be excel. the trellis. Yeah, that, that you have this, that you need to get the right people in their life, mm -hmm. the right, you know, activities on their college resume, you know, all these different things. You got to get all those things in place because that'll be the support structure that, you know, skyrockets them to the moon, you know, that gets them to the job of their dreams. So here's how we would say is I would start asking questions of where are all, where is all of my time going in maybe personally, mm -hmm. but also in regards to my kids. Yeah. When I look at their schedule, when I look at my calendar, mm -hmm. you know, my kids are now to that age where we have to calendar in their activities as well as our right. own activities. When I look at our calendar, where are all of those activities? Are they things that enhance their greatness or their goodness? Mm -hmm. What about your thoughts? Yeah, I think w your thoughts are really important because what is what is it that you're spending your time thinking about or yeah. worrying about? Yeah. What consumes you mentally? Like, That's right. are you worried about what other people think of you? Yeah. Or are you worried, or worried about- Once again, with your kid, what they think about your what kid. About your kid. Are you worried about how, to, how you're gonna get enough money to make something happen? Yes. Yes. Or are you worried about, you know, that, that you're just not putting the right things in place to get your child to where you want them to be. That's right. Those are the things that are, that are mine, you know, that consumes our mind. That also is part of the rule. Yeah. Cause know? how often are you sitting and I'm being honest, are you actually sitting worrying about and take the word worry out. That's just kind of a colloquial way of saying it. Like a, you concerned about not the worry in the way that Jesus said, don't worry, but that you genuinely go to God in prayer about your, your child's spiritual life and who are the people who are influencing right. them towards godliness and those things? Or how much of your prayers are, I'm worried about their grades, or I'm worried about if they have enough extracurriculars, right. or if they're happy enough. Or I'm worried enough, if they're or, happy, or I'm worried if they're going to get along with people, yes. and all these things. I mean, those are important. Like, Yeah, they're getting, fine like, things. They're but, fine, but you're worried about their spiritual, you know, we you, right. you want to be consumed with pushing them toward goodness, and that's that's different than Well, and those things, your worries, your money, your time, they will motivate you to a certain side of goodness or greatness. Mm -hmm. These last ones, I think, are the big ones, especially once you get teenagers or preteens. It's not as much with your little ones, but certainly with your preteens and your teenagers. What are you having conflicts with them about? Or what are you setting boundaries or consequences over? So what I mean is, uh, do you spend a lot of time talking with them about um, whether their behavior looks like Jesus? Mm -hmm. Or are you talking about their homework a lot yeah. or their grades a lot mm -hmm. or something that you, th you, you know, you signed them up for and they don't want to do it. And you're like, well, we're going to right. figure this out or, you know, all of these different things. What are you having conflicts over? If it's once again, things where, because I will say, and I have four children, part of being a parent is I'm trying to train them in godliness. I'm trying to right. train them in goodness and because they're sinful, like I'm sinful, they need a lot of training. So there are times we have conflict. Of I said to one of my daughters the other day, she, 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 and one of her sisters tricked. They have tablet time, and they have to mm -hmm. every day. They have a little bit of time, and it, that can be playing a video game, playing the tablet, right. and they all have to switch devices because we don't have an endless number of devices. We have right. four devices, and, and they get rotated, and around. they get rotated around. Well, they can trade them if they want to. Well, one pair got together and tricked the other one. And I don't even remember the details, but it was a trick of if you play this, it'll work out the mm -hmm. way you want. Well, they lied to her and they got what they wanted. So I just pulled them aside and I said, I'm not going to make you give it back. I'm not going to do any of those yeah. things. Just know that you. Yeah, so what you did was a lie. And they said, well, we were just like playing a trick, like a joke. And I said, what happens at the end of every joke? And they said, everyone laughs. I said, is she laughing? And they said, mm -hmm. no. I said, no. I said, you tricked to get what you wanted. Even if I said you deceived, you lied. And I said, and both of you have agreed that you want to follow Jesus, which means Jesus gets to be king of everything you do, mm -hmm. right? And then one of them said to me, uh, so what am I supposed to do? Just beg her for it? <laughs> That's and, awesome. And I said, maybe. I said, or maybe you just ask for it. And she goes, well, then she won't give it to me. I said, then you don't get it this time. 
I said, because once you take off the table, right. I don't get to lie or yell at her to get it, which is what Jesus would say you don't do. Mm -hmm. Now all you're left with is asking. Mm -hmm. And if she says no, then you don't get it. And you then can learn, I guess I didn't need it every day because I'm going to get it when it's mm -hmm. my turn. And once again, that is a conflict because she was upset with me that I'm getting yeah. onto her and, you know, all these different things. But am I using it to promote goodness in her? Right. Or am I using it to say, you didn't do your grade again and you're not a B student. You're yes. an A student. Oh, yeah. You're capable of some, you know, all those different kinds of things. And I'm not saying even that's no. wrong. I'm just saying, where is that going? What's the rule? Right. That is guiding the conversations right. or the times you ground them. What's it over? Mm -hmm. Is it over the fact that they lied mm -hmm. or is it over the fact that uh, they didn't, they, they failed a class and now they have to X, right. Y, Z. And for me, I know with my older child, he plays baseball and, you know, he, I, I want to celebrate some of yeah. his accomplishments. Absolutely. That. However, I want him to always hear the non- yeah. achievement compliments, the greatness, the, the greatness compliments less than I he hears the goodness. Yeah. So I say things a lot like, I really loved how you, um, yeah. you know, I loved seeing you be a leader in the, in the dugout yes. or I loved how, you know, I love seeing how every player that comes to first base, you actually have a conversation with them. Mm. You know, I try to point those things out That's right. regularly because right. at the end of the day, I don't care if he is good at baseball, that's but right. I do care how he treats everybody on the field. Well, this, that's another one I'd like to add then, Molly. You've exposed another one, which is what are you praising your kids for? Mm -hmm. You know, once again, I think it's perfectly acceptable in that game to praise in my kid, man, when you, when whatever, you hit yeah. that double and that's the reason that our, your yeah. team won. And man, I know you worked so hard or, you know, you, you know, he's a pitcher or whatever, you know, and I know you've really been working hard all season long on your fastball mm -hmm. or your curveball, yes. and you you knocked it. Like, to praise them, as we said in our previous episode about, you know, languages, that he may need that specifics. But the question is, is that the only thing you praise him for? Right. Or are you praising him just as much? And we would say put more weight on mm -hmm. the praise, as you just said, of the way that you helped that kid who didn't mm -hmm. who didn't have any word. You became friends with that one kid everyone found annoying, or you did that because what you're now doing is redirecting as a trellis would. You are working as the rule of life for them, redirecting their heart to, hey, you know, scoring the winning run, that's, that's a great mm -hmm. thing. But what is better, what is truly good is being a friend to someone who doesn't have a friend. Right. Being kind to someone no one else is kind to. What you're doing is, in that praising, in creating systems, in creating a rule, a structure around it, is you are making sure that you as the parent, your heart doesn't get tempted towards greatness. Right. Because it's really hard. I it's mean, really hard. When, when, when I see my kid do something really well, you know, our yeah. kids do karate, and when they have a moment, like, and now they're doing the uh, competition, they call them kumite, where they okay. actually fight other kids, which is mm -hmm. way f more fun than I thought. <laughs> oh, I mean, wow. Watching my kid try to beat up another yeah. kid is way more fun than it probably oh, should wow. be. But when one of them does well and they win and you see that yeah, look and you're just like, that's, and there is something that's like, man, that's my kid. Look at my kid. Yeah. Doing and I'm not saying there's levels of that. That's good. That's and, fine. And that, that, that I'm, that I'm, I'm proud of their accomplishment and I'm proud of what they are. There's also though, just a little bit of temptation to say, Hmm, now I'm a little higher than other parents in mm -hmm. this room. You know, I'm looking at the other parent. I'm like, sorry, your kid sucks. Mm -hmm. Like, yeah. <laughs> sorry, this kid's not good. I'm sorry, yeah, my kid right. beat your kid. You know, there's <laughs> right. a little bit of, pride that comes into that as well and you have to be on guard so what you want to do is create a rule that mm -hmm. says the things that we will make sure we celebrate the things we'll put boundaries we'll have conflict over mm -hmm. that we will make sure get enforced the things i'm going to work you know be concerned about the things i'm going to give my thought my money my time to are things that mm -hmm. lead to the goodness of god and they fit under this rule of life yeah because our systems and our trellis and our structure yes. will produce results yes. and if we align that over here with greatness we will more likely produce a greatness result if That's we put right. it over here with goodness yes we're more in line to get the goodness result that we want now like we said some of those things may you know go back and forth but but and we, your kid does play a role because ultimately that's the part and and I'm I'm Mr. Molly knows. I am Mr. Rule of Life. Yes. I am I am Mr. Let's you know, Mr. Discipleship. Let's make sure let's we have a rule of life. Yes, and but, we've identified it and we yeah. yeah. But your children are not products you produce. And so what I mean is no. even if you do this rule of life really well, 
Um, there is no A determines B for sure. Correct. And that's what you have to remember. But you have to say, well, if I put A in place, the yes. probability of B yes. likely goes up. <laughs> yes. Well, it's well because once again, you have to live with, God is so good. He has given us control over things in our life. And we have to operate in this life within the bounds of what we control. And so what I mean is no parent goes, um, you know, I, I really want my kid to learn to read, but you know, that maybe that's out of bounds for them. So I'm just not going to send them to school. Right. right. <laughs> I'm not even going to send them to learn how to do this. You know, I hope they graduate high school, but I'm not sure if that's ever going to happen. So I'm not even going to send them. No, you, you, you teach them. You and help. you create a system. You don't just go, I'm going to give them a book and they'll figure it out. You, you, you learn just, phonics or you learn some system of how to teach reading because you go, I want to give them the best chance to learn how to read or to learn how to play sports or to learn how to do this. You help them set up the trellis, right? You're setting right. up the trellis so that your child can have the best opportunity, time and opportunity to be connected. That's right. And to grow in goodness the way you would want them to. And so, so that's what we're going to yeah, spend that's the what next. We're, how many weeks? We don't know. I don't want to say. We can take I'd, a poll. We can have a poll. How many weeks uh, do you think yes. we're going to spend on I'll this I'll tell topic? you this. <laughs> this might come up to one of the longest ones we've done because what we're going to do is we as actually as a church, so in our in our uh, core discipleship program, mm -hmm. our on-mission program, we have a common rule of life that everyone who does that program says, this is how I'm going to operate my mm -hmm. life based on these five principles. Right. And so we want people to start thinking about that in their families. Yes. And what and, does that look like? And we, Molly and I are actually on a team at the church where we're starting to look at what would be a rule of life we could propose to parents in our church and say, hey, would you would you consider maybe adopting this with your family? That for people at Community Christian, this mm -hmm. is a good trellis that we think would help your children grow in the goodness of God. And so really what we're going to try and do is really take those elements of the rule of mm -hmm. life and break them down over a course of episodes. So we might take one element and take five episodes or oh, yeah. 22 episodes <laughs> on five that one element. Five, 25. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So we're going to really try to help yes. us get this so that we can create this rule And this of is life. the practical part we've talked about. We said this year yes. we're trying to be really practical. And I yes. know the saying rule of life sounds so, yeah. so kind of up in the air, but really ultimately... Rule of life comes down to practical things. That it's the uh, habits the trellis you have in your life. is a yeah. the trellis is habits that or that, rhythms or is rhythms is one of the words that we prefer to use that that establish that structure for us. That's right. So it's going to be a lot of things and probably things you can already figure out. You know, scripture is a part of it, prayer what? is a part of it. Yeah. <laughs> All of these <laughs> <to> pray <laughs> these things that we want our kids their rhythms that hopefully you have in your life. And that's really the first part of this is really before you get it to your kid, or I shouldn't say before, but if you're going to get it to your kid, you, you have, have to have, have it. So you it. could start it the same day you teach your kid how to do this, but that, that they see mom does this, dad does this. So I should do too, that we're trying to teach them. This is what it looks like to be a follower of Jesus. So mm -hmm. things like reading scripture, things like prayer, uh, and then I don't want to give them all away right now, but I know those are the first two that we're going to talk about. And it's going to be a key part of what it looks like to help prepare our children for life in God's right. goodness. And so, you know, feel free to ask questions about yeah, all this. Yeah, send in some questions you might have. We're going to said something that, you know, made you want to ask us, you yeah. know, what's next or a question that might pertain to your life. Or you might have a comment on this. That yes. We are happy to receive those. There's a link in the show notes, so feel free to put that in there. But we're excited about this. Yes. We think this is, um, you know, this is obviously tremendously important as yes. we're trying to parent our family, our, our children towards God's goodness and, and live our own lives towards yes. God's goodness. So thanks for being with us today and we'll see you next time. Take care.